Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more automation and BeamNG Drive. Today we are creating the greatest 1990s sleeper in the world. Um, it's not going to be the fastest, it's not going to be the prettiest, but it's going to do a lot of things right and that is, you know, be a sleeper obviously. Um, so it's going to be sort of based off of such cars as the 1990s-ish Chevrolet Impala SS, the 1990s-ish Lotus Carlton, and the 1990s-ish BMW M5. So four-door sedans, they don't look, I mean, they look, you know, pretty good, uh, but for, for, in my opinion, they look pretty great. But uh, to most people, they are pretty much run-of-the-mill four-door sedans with a secret underneath the hood. So without further ado, let us begin. We are choosing a pretty long wheelbase vehicle. It's going to be a full-size sedan. Not like a you know a mid-sized or a compact. I don't know. Is there, is there that much options? Who knows? So big sedan, 111 inch wheelbase. So that's pretty large. 1984 sedan body in the year 1996. So uh, that is the last year um, that one of my cars that I used to drive, a Buick Roadmaster, was in production. So um, you know, pretty much an ode to that. It's going to be now. I've been debating myself on this. Either going to be steel, obviously, or partial aluminum. You know, I, I could do treated steel, but I don't really care for those. They don't add anything to to, to me at least, right? Um, we're not looking at specs on a paper, we're looking at car itself and how I feel it. We're going to do steel just to start off. I might change it to partial uh, aluminum or aluminium for you guys across the pond. Um, you know, we'll see. So it's going to be a ladder chassis just like the Chevrolet Impala. Um, because Unibody is just... Chevrolet Impala, Chevy Caprice, basically same car. Uh, Buick Master, uh, and I think... There's maybe a Cadillac DeVille, I think that was based off of it. It's going to be a, a, a ladder chassis, uh, pretty much like the very end American full-size sedans, like the good ones, like the Crown Victoria, obviously. Uh, sure. Three, six, seven. We're going to do AHS Steel. I, I might do Steel or AHS Steel. I don't have a budget for this, but in 1996, 30k was, uh, you know, the, the, a pretty high side, I think, for, like, for one of these vehicles. This is a generic vehicle-ish with a uh, surprise underneath the hood. So it's gonna be, of course, front-mounted longitudinal engine. I think, um, you know, for the performance-oriented version, of course, because it says a performance-oriented version, it's a sleeper. Double wishbone front and rear, maybe. Do multi-link, like that's that's a little that's a little advanced. Multi-link's a little advanced. Um, we'll do double wishbone. We'll do a 60-degree V8 engine. So it'll be all cast iron, push rod, it's going to be big ones. It's going to be similar to, of course, the uh, Impala SS. Now, we can do the aluminum heads and the aluminum block like the, uh, the Corvette would have had. Buick, Roadmaster, Chevrolet, Impala SS, yada, yada, yada. Had. Of course, GM likes to share their engines. We're going to do a nice, big stroke. I want a lot of torque. I don't care if it's the exact spec. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, you know, re rebuilding an engine, uh, remaking my own LT1 V8 engine. 5.7 liter. Maybe we could do a little bigger. That's a, that's a bit bigger. 6.1 liter V8 engine. It's going to be... 1990s. It's not gonna be crazy. I'm shooting for maybe high 200 horsepower, a 6.1 liter V8, all cast iron for now. I might change it. Gotta keep the budget. Let the camp up just a bit higher. 60. Compression just down to 9 to 1. I might increase that too. Injection multi point sounds fine. Um, per cylinder sounds a little expensive, but we'll do it. This is this is the you know the performance trim, right? Standard intake though. We don't want anyone to know what this thing actually is from afar. Exhaust. It's tubular exhaust, probably dual, because this is a V8, obviously. Two-way, not reversal, just baffle, baffle. We'll see what we're at for loudness and stuff. 26 loudness if we're grounding. That's not bad. Doesn't rev high enough, though. I could do forged internals. Is this lightweight for the Conrad's? Lightweight forged. Jeez, it's a little, a little low revving, to be honest, to be frank. I might actually spend a bit of money on these. Just a bit because I can. Of course, this is some very expensive internals. I might change it after. I'd like it right to 6k with it, with it still being torquey, obviously. 6,000 RPM, so it's screaming there at 6,000. We can I mean, quite high. Um, to, actually, this is pretty good stats. This is pretty much the same as the Impala SS right now. Actually, for one. Gas mileage, I'm shooting for the 20-ish uh, miles per gallon range as well. Efficiency is quite low, which is... Probably just lower the compression ratio, I think. I think a nice low compression ratio will just... Pretty advanced timing. Yeah, we are pulling more efficient 
I mean, less torque, obviously, but a more efficient engine. Good go. Ooh, that's looking real good. Oh. Come on, just give me ex just give me an exact number. We just play around with let's just play around with the amp profile. A little bit full and a little bit less fuel. Amp profile a little more. And oof. We're close. We're getting there. I can feel it. 330. There we go. 305 horse and 335 torque. It's it's hard to make crazy torquey engines in this game without just taking away all horsepower. I think it's pretty good. Pretty balanced graph. 222 torque run launch. Makes peak torque around 3,500 RPM, which is, I'd say, pretty standard. We're not going to see how it sounds. I'm going to show you how it sounds in Beam and G Drive, obviously. Uh, hopefully, at least get there. Um, this is the car. Big old car. Big bumpers. Are we going to have bumpers? We're going to have bumpers. This is the uh, Cube Master release had some sort of... We have small bumpers, though. It's nice and small. Just enough so you can actually tell there's a bumper there. I'm going to fiddle with the body after, though. Let's just keep going on. Uh, the tires look like they're wide enough, which is good. Three roll drive, obviously. A manual. Five speed sounds pretty fine. We just have a... Now the question is, limited slip diff or no limited slip? We'll do a gear limited slip diff for now. Radial medium compound this is still this is not a sports car it's a street car heart 245s are actually a little small 255s would be nice and the front we can go 45s are kind of big 25s i might change the tire sizes it's aluminum rims yeah this is a performance car got to show that somehow three pistons and then big brakes because i always like have big brakes then we're going to do fully clad and cooling flaps to help with fuel economy as well Five seater, actually the Buick Roadmaster is a six seater. Okay, I consider that a sleeper, but we're, the, I think the Impala was a five seater. We'll keep it five seater. Um, standard interior, probably I think maybe standard set. Um, but it's sort of still a premium car, you know, just with uh, premium interior. Yeah, that's fine. Hydraulic power steering, traction control, and ABS, and the best safety as I always like to do. Just I don't want to do air suspension. Just standard. Into, well, I might, I'll play around with this after if you have budget left over. Uh, 36 is actually quite light. We get 10 miles per gallon average. It's awful, obviously. And 0.60 is 6 one. It's quite fast. It is quite fast. Which is reason it's terrible. The mileage per gallon is awful. I might play with around with that. It's going to be hard to get it. Oh, I'm already so set on that. 45. 40 grand it is expensive, too. Gosh darn it, this thing is expensive. The engine is quite expensive. Uh, we can probably just lower this down, I think. 5,000, oh wait, it's just, I can't believe the numbers here. 5,600, we're actually, is it the same horsepower? Yeah, I hope. we'll just keep it at this. We can actually lower down some, or save some money there. Uh, pistons, we can go just a forged. Ooh, it's a little in the, in the crank, we can go down to cast iron. Nope, forged it is, okay. The forged internals, not realistic, I know, that's okay. We just saved ten thousand dollars on the engine on the vehicle itself. Um, want to do hundred at least kilometers now. One hundred eighty is probably what it would have been governed to. Do two hundred kilometers an hour. This is the sporty model, obviously. Six point one seconds zero sixty was well, I guess this doesn't change at all. Even if we six three, there we go. What are we gonna like ten here? Eight. Well, honestly, kind of small gears. First gear takes us to fifty kilometers an hour, then seventy seven hundred and ten. Then I want second gear to take us. To That's kind of short spacing though. It's actually faster. Second gear takes us 100 kilometers an hour. First gear takes us to 70, 130, 165. One. A final drive is 4.3 to 1. So that's a, a odd final drive for a um, a $30,000 full size stand. It looks like nothing right now. It'll change. Don't you worry. The shrink fix. It's nice and it's just small bumpers, you know. I think the car is. It's pretty good. We can probably go just regular steel, I'm thinking, because uh, we, could, we, we could take more weight and save some money. The Impala SS was around 4,000 pounds. It was 4,000 pounds. It wasn't around. It was 4,000-ish pounds. 3,700. So it's a bit lighter and a bit more power and torque and a bit faster. The road... Or not the road... The Impala SS could do 0 to 60 and around the 7 second mark from the factory. I think I think it came with just a 4-speed auto. Don't quote me on that, though. Um, 
but I think it just came with a four. I don't think there was a manual option at all. I think it was just a four speed uh, Chevrolet automatic gearbox. Specs are. So we can get better with an automatic lock and dip. We can save some money. Oh, but limited slip. So much. No? Um, we are under budget. We could probably go bigger brakes, even though we don't need them. Just oversized brakes, just for funsies. Lower down the pad type, make it a bit more comfortable. Let me get you this around. Better. Just a bit better. So we're at 20, wow, this is a, not bad at all. 26 grand in the 1990s is probably like 40 grand today, which is not bad. Uh, the right height might be a little low though. No, it's not. 15 inch, we're doing 17s, just like all SS inch rims. And some thick boy tires as well. I could go sports. Sports compound, 5.8 seconds or six. It, it, it's getting a pretty fast vehicle. It's getting pretty fast. We're getting 11 miles per gallon average. This thing is just a gas guzzler. That's, that's fine by me. Okay. So I think the car is generally done. So what I do next, what I always do, is I'm gonna have a time lapse of me, of course, designing the car, and then uh, I'll, I'll tweak the engine. I might tweak some few things here and there. I'll let you guys know after the the time lapse. Uh, one thing I want to mention before it starts is um, now for every video while I'm actually doing the builds for automation, I'll have a little annotation on the top right of the screen during the time lapse so you guys can actually choose or vote for what you think are the options I should do next. And if you, if you don't like one of the options, you click the other option. There's like another, it's just like an other, so like none of the list, just click that other option, vote for that. Then comment down below screaming at me, say, Rai, what the heck are you doing? I want you to do this, do this for me now. And I try to get, you know, I try to do what people want, but also things pop up that I want to do. I, it just comes to me, you know, like, oh, I want to make this car and I'm doing that right now, you know? So um, let me know in the comments down below what you want me to, what do you want to see me do next? Uh, I also do plan on more games on the channel besides automation, street legal, racing, red line, and DMG. Um, a Forza Horizon video is going to be coming at some point of me just driving around, probably doing a race, uh, building a car, doing a races with that and just hanging out basically. Um, so yeah guys, hope you guys enjoy the time lapse and I'll see you in just a few minutes.
And we are finally done with our sporty kind of luxury. You know, I, I would say it's more like a premium sedan, costing $31,500 in 1996, which is equivalent. I mean, if we're using like inflation and stuff, it's, equivalent, it's, it's around a $50,000 vehicle, basically. So it's it, it's a premium-ish. I did change the interior. I did actually add air to the car. Uh, it handles, it'll handle a bit better, hopefully. Uh, it doesn't have as much oversteer going over any speed. I mean, it still has lots of oversteer, obviously, but it's it's not meant to handle great. It's meant to be just kind of fast. Quick, if you will, 0 to 16, 6.1 seconds. It does weigh a bit more. Uh, that's due to the premium interior and premium cassette. Cassette? Cassette? Cassette. I could probably have premium CD if I wanted it, but that would take up more money. So cassette is fine. You don't need a CD player or a CD. That's fine. Um, so looking at the car before we jump in, uh, first off, the car, you know, it does have slightly similar stuff to, or similar stuff, it, it does slightly resemble my other luxury-ish vehicle, I mean it was a luxury car that I made, uh, one of my earlier videos, you can check that out if you guys want, I'll link that uh, in the description if you guys want to check it out at the end of the video. Um, so this does have some design cues from a few cars, uh, Chevrolet Impala SS, you know it's not really the body for it, but some cues are kind of there, uh, Lexus LS400, so a luxury sedan. Uh, and then a few other sedans of so the Buick Roadmaster, I looked at some Cadillacs, etc. Um, so let's start at the front and actually work our way to the back. So the front we have these, I don't want to say, like, I, I didn't feel like these, these are like Lexus LS-ish headlights, to be honest. Like a Japanese style headlight. Uh, sharp lines, the headlights there, that stretch all, like it just follows the body line all the way back to the taillight, actually. I thought it was kind of cool. Premium feel, I don't know. Um, there's no, you know, badge in the grill or anything. It's, it's clean, basically, right? This is clean. I was thinking of having like some sort of like cooler badge in the middle, but I don't want to give it away, you know. I'll just say like, you know, pretty pretty empty, you know. Uh, we got the Stars Ashy, which is the company, the badge in the hood there. Bit of a hood bulge. And then looking at the bottom areas, we have actually some headlight wipers. Just a piece of like, you know, plastic-ish trim, I guess is what this is. Like sticking on the front just to give it a little bit more depth without its, you know, the car looks... It's, it's, a, it's a plain car. I like this. It's like, an, it's like a unibrow. I like unibrows in my cars. License plate. A little bit high, actually. Probably could lower it down just a bit. Uh, nothing kind of special about the lower bumper. We got the turn more turn signals there. A little bit of a grill, then some trim and like a, you know, or a splitter, I guess. The front. Yeah. Uh, I didn't put any headlight or any you know, windshield wipers in this car because it just, it just couldn't look good with them. And um, I, w I wasn't happy with it. I'm like, you know, I'm just going to take it off. But it, it would have it, of course, like any car. Uh, side is pretty plain, like sides of lots of 1990s cars like i was looking at all of them they're like oh, they're all just like oh wow you have like one badge here i'm like ah uh, the rims are kind of reminiscent of the chevy hell ss which is the benchmark um i'm not sure how much that costed but you know similar ish price point so this we have pretty much lexus ls 400 door handles uh coming to the back we have a, you know the gas tank we have uh going from bottom to top we have dual exhaust with some, like a, a splitter at the bottom here, sort of drowning it. Piece of trim here, two reverse lights for whatever reason. I don't know, maybe it's a, just a, like a light to just uh, light, up, light up the lights this late. I'm not sure. Uh, then we get to the tail lights, which are pretty unique. Um, some might say they're a little advanced for the 1990s. I would agree with you. They are a little advanced looking, you know, following the body lines. That's a little 2000s, you know, at least. Um, what I thought of this car, I'm making this car, I like to come with, with a backstory. Obviously, I always do. That's, that's, I don't know why, but you know, don't judge me. So basically, this car is Stars Ashy. It's my Japanese car brand. Uh, it is their flagship, top of the line, full size sedan. It's it's like a Honda Accord, but better. So it, it's almost like a, it, it's like an Acura. I wouldn't say Acura is a luxury brand. Acura is like a premium brand. It's like a premium Honda. Not, not like Lexus to Toyota. I don't consider Acura luxury. I consider Lexus luxury. I'm not biased. I own a Lexus. I'm not biased. Don't judge me. I know you're judging me. Don't you judge me. Um, so it's sort of like a premium-ish vehicle. It's their top-of-line car. Uh, in today's world, what would, like, that'd be a Toyota Avalon, I guess? So it's like their premium flagship sedan, kind of thing. Um, that's what this is. This is Sarzashi Settler GXS V8. So, of course, you don't see any GXS badging, because people don't care. They don't care what the model is. They don't care, right? This car is, is, you know... The future of Sirs Ashy. 1996 was a great year. They just released their brand new premium sedan. And sedans were probably hot at the time. I'm not really sure. I wasn't even alive then. Um, so it's their premium 
fit in and they wanted to go all out. They, they came up with this wild design, you know, very striking, very sharp lines, basically like, like hard creases in a time where cars were getting curvier and curvier, like the Chevy Impala. Uh, you know, lots of the cars were, were kind of curvy. The Ford Taurus was actually, was, was quite uh, bubble-like, I guess, yeah. Uh, this is a, this is a sharper lines, and yet it gets great mile, great gas mileage. No, it doesn't. It gets 10.5 miles, 11. We're rounding up to 11. 11 miles per gallon average. 305 horse, 335 torque, which is a lot more than a Corolla. Um, there's the actually name right here. Trunk opener. You have two antennas because this is a premium model, and it's going to have two antennas because why not? Uh, yeah, nothing really else. You have a bit of like, you know, just a, like an accent sort of grill here just to make it look kind of nicer. Um, besides that, I was thinking of actually putting like a louvers, window louvers here. I thought it looked cool, but I think when it gave it away that it's a sleeper. I do really want to do a DTM. Like 1990s DTM style sedan. Like fender flares, a big like a wang at the back, and like some crazy to sink the front end. I'm thinking, I'd like to do at some point a uh, 1990s-ish. Uh, I want to make it built based on like a Japanese company like, like a Star's Ash, maybe, maybe I'll make like a compact sedan, a smaller Star's Ash sedan based off of this, the looks wise, a uh, little less you know expensive all that, but this is, I want like a DTM version of it basically, race version, that'd be pretty cool, let me know um, in the comments down below what you want me to see next, but for now, let us jump into uh, Beeman G Drive and see how she drives. All right, guys, so we are finally in Beeman G Drive with the Starzashi Settler G, I think the GVS 8 or whatever it's called. Um, so our sleeper sedan, it's done, it's here, it's in the game. Um, first thoughts in Beeman G, the paint doesn't look great, of course, it never looks as good as Beeman G. It looks actually okay, though, but it's just not great. Back end, you know what, I still think it could pass for um, 1990s from the straight back from the side. A little less just because it's over here a little less it's still it's, it's really cool i think it looks cool um it's a little bit of uh futuristic ish for the 90s which is fine because this is like the t you know not top of the line but it's it's high end for starzashi starzashi is like a mid-level japanese brand probably I'm, I'm assuming i'm making up as i go so this is the car we're gonna drive it now um we are in beam and g obviously this is the automation map but this is the full loop around the entire map we probably won't do a whole thing because if i crash i'm gonna be pretty upset but i'm gonna do my best anyways um Let's uh, let's just take her for a drive. First off, it does sound really awesome. Very smooth sounding V8, and off to a terrible start because I didn't launch it at all. But it's still great acceleration. I wish I made the uh, the gears just a little bit longer. Actually, we're gonna brake, brake, brake. The brakes were pretty good. This thing is quite heavy. I think it's the mid three thousand pounds, if I'm not wrong. Oh, this is a, this is like a gravel map. Yeah, yeah, this is gravel. This is gonna be a real fun now. Um, 305 horsepower, so it's very similar to a Chevrolet Corvette power-wise in the 1990s. Um, I think it's just a base model, or maybe just a uh, slightly higher than base model, maybe I'm not too sure. I know the, yeah, I think, um, the L, the engine I have in one of my cars is enough. Just about an LT1 without the, uh, aluminum heads. And it's got about 20 less. The Corvette's got just under 300 horsepower, I think, in the base model. So we have 305 and a heavier body. Obviously, it's a bigger car overall, massive footprint. On an off-road map, even though we're not supposed to be on an off-road map, this is just awful. It's so scary to drive. Um, so far, impressions feels quite balanced. And honestly, like, the back end is just so striking. I really like it. There's no turn signals, I don't think, at all. That's fine. We don't need turn signals where we're going. Let's just imagine that it would be in the taillights or something, you know? I'm just going to imagine that. I'm not going for any record time because I've never done this course once in my entire life. So I have no idea where we're going. I think it goes... Oh, we're going up here a bit. Oh. Hey, a lot of gravel. A lot more than I was hoping for. I didn't expect any gravel. I probably should have read the description. I didn't read it at all, so that's on me. I believe it does switch over to pavement, though, up the hill. Or at least part of it. A break. Brakes work fantastic, they don't lock up. You know, if there's one thing I think I'm good at, it's making brakes that just work as they should. They don't lock up, they, they, they're pretty good for force. It could be a little more force, actually, but, uh, oh. Oh, this is where it's icy. Oh, this is just, this is gonna be worse. <laughs> this is terrible. Oh, boy. I shouldn't have picked, like, a <laughs> no traction control on a car with a ton of power. 
This is a scary course. This is like a, a totally a rally course. Like a, you know, I guess like a groupie rally almost because a bunch of different events. There's, you know, pavement and mud and or dirt and stuff. And maybe there's some mud later. Who knows? Okay, I'm going to break. It, it's not ice. It's just cold. It feels like almost because it just, it's not ice. Ice is slipperier. Oh, no, it's ice. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. Is that scary? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I wish I wish I had a sequential gearbox as an option. That'd be kind of cool. I wish it got unlocked a bit earlier. Oh, we're gonna break here. We're gonna go down and just. Oh wow, she's. Oh, we're getting down here. So it's a little less and a little more grip, which is awesome. Take some twisties, just a bit faster. And yeah, it, it does handle. Pretty good. This is the only take I'm doing of this whole car. So I'm doing this all in one take, guys. This is the first take. This is such a long course. Um. You know what I'll probably do even as I'm do as I'm as I'm driving around in here I, I might even speed up bits and pieces if I mess up or something just so people watching don't watch me just drive around for 20 minutes but yeah I'm gonna keep talking while we're doing this because uh, that's what I like to do you know talk as you might be able to tell oh we're going this way oh we're fine we're fine we're fine let's drive straight. And, uh, you know, I just want to say welcome to everyone who's new to the channel. We've pretty almost doubled in size in, um, in a week. That's pretty awesome. Almost double, yeah, almost double, I'd say. So welcome, guys, to the channel. Um, I'm going to be posting around every second day on here. Maybe every third day, maybe every fourth day, but, you know, I'm going to be posting pretty regularly on here. Uh oh, we're wiping out here. We just, oh, we're crashing. Oh, that was a bad one. <laughs> we didn't even make it to the end. Oh, no, that was so bad. I'm not recording that again. Um, did any of you guys see the Tesla pickup truck reveal? If so, what did you, what did you think? Um, does the car still run? Of course not. Um, the car is toast. I'm not restarting this. This was, it, it was a lot of fun. It was different than some of my other stuff. Um, we do have a locking differential if you want to. I'm not going to, I mean, I can if I want right now. Why not? Turn on traction control. Oh, we can't. The car's not working. Problem solved. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys thought of this car in the comments down below. Feedback is always welcome to give me some feedback. What did I do wrong with this car? You know, um, the taillights, not everyone's gonna love them. I love them. I think they're wild, uh, for the, like the 1990s. Um, just this part of it, really. The back end's kind of, kind of normal. Um, the vent's kind of weird. You know, the exhaust tip's kind of, it lo looks like a sleeper. Let me know what I should do next. I'm gonna have like the little poles on the screen. Uh, whatever the video you guys have probably already seen it if you guys already saw the poll it was probably during the actual car build um, Just vote in the poll but what you want if you don't want to be you know if, if even if you don't like any of the choices There's another option just vote other and then comment down below What the heck you want to see me do because I'll do it I have a list and it's, it's growing every day of cars that I want to do and I also want to do a subscriber Sort of challenge I guess with you guys um, where me Canadian seal would sort of you know set the benchmark with our own cars and then you guys build all of your own cars and we would each test the cars, each of us would test the cars, uh, and sort of grade them on our own, not really grade them, but um, we'd each drive them in different events, or use them in different events, and then the winning cars basically will get a pat on the back from us maybe or something, maybe I'll have a prize, I'm not sure, maybe I'll like, I saw someone on Reddit uh, offering Reddit Premium, like a month of Reddit Premium or something, or some, you know, a gold thing or whatever to people who win, I don't want to do that, maybe I'll have it so, uh, you know, the winner can get the V16 engine pack for free, like I'll, I'll, I'll buy them the V16 engine pack, or, um, you know, I'll buy him something else, maybe. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Your support means the world to me. And as always, I'll see you next time.